Well, the communist dictatorship, which isolated Albania from the rest of the world for decades, also prevented one of its most famous citizens, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, from returning to her homeland. But since communism's collapse, Mother Teresa's Missionaries of Charity organization has moved swiftly to help Europe's most impoverished country. Mother Teresa was particularly moved, apparently, by the response of the British people, who gave £8 million to an appeal which followed a series of reports on Breakfast News. In her first television interview for 10 years, Mother Teresa spoke to our correspondent, Bill Hamilton. For a lifetime, she has radiated God's love across the globe. But only now can Albanians join the rest of the world in openly expressing their love for their country's most famous daughter, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. These are emotionally charged times for a nation where God was abolished and where people suffered unspeakable horrors for refusing to abandon their faith. The return of religious freedoms crowned by a first ever papal visit represented such a joyous moment for Mother Teresa that just for once she agreed to cast aside her normal practice of declining television interviews and talk to me about her country and her mission. The people, you could look at their faces, now you see that there is real peace. The first time when I came here, it was completely different. Yeah. Completely different. Difficult to explain, but it was different. Mm. But now it is so beautiful. But does it surprise you? Here we are reaching the end of the 20th century and it seems your work is in greater demand than ever. Yes, it is. And all over. Now we are in 105 countries and we have 500 convents all around the world mm. without counting India. <laughs> mm. Beautiful. Yeah, and what is very beautiful that many people thank me for giving them opportunity to do works of love. It has helped so many people, they would have never had a chance to do anything for the poor. And now, through us, they are getting involved in the work so much. Work that Mother Teresa insists is not confined just to the third world. Worried about the homeless situation in Britain, she's seeking to increase the number of centers and soup kitchens where her sisters are feeding several hundred people every day. God has been so good to us, to give us the opportunity to serve Him, because Jesus said very clearly, whatever you do to the least of brethren, you did it to me. Yes. You give a, a glass of water in my name, do it to me. If you receive a little child in my name, you receive me. And we have received thousands of children all over the place. Yeah, it's wonderful. We have given in adoption over 3,000 people. Two or three children went to England also. And one of them has grown big now and married. And the first thing she wrote to me, she said, Mother, please give me a, one little child. To, I want to do to the child what you did to me. <laughs> when your lifetime's work is finally over, will your organization carry on? Oh, yes. It is not I who are doing it. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, God's work, and that is why we must uh, do everything possible not to spoil God's work, that it remains His. We do it like that, and we are sure to do it well then. Because it is not how much we do, but how much love we put in the doing. That makes all the difference. And I'm very, very grateful to the English people who have done so much to help peace, love and joy to bring into this country. The people appreciate it very much. I don't know if they are very much, very come very close to the English people. I don't know how, but so I'm thanking all of you for what you have all done for, for our people here.